everybody it's sniper roach 141 here today with you and i am bringing you katawa sojo um katawa sojo is a game made by four leaf studios which is basically just a group of people from 4chan who made this quote-unquote game it's uh, actually a visual novel uh katawa sojo i believe uh, means disability girls it's a romance visual novel i guess you would say where you get to make key choices along the line so that you can go through different characters path lines and romance options um if you're looking at all these uh if you play the game it's free to play as well uh just google katawa sojo and go to their site and you can download it for free and enjoy all of it and it is an amazing visual novel and game <clears throat> so um i've played through this game in pretty much every single scenario and i've gotten all except one situation i, I guess you can say one uh route or route rather and yeah, I'm not going to do that one, but yeah, I've done pretty much all of them except for one. Uh, I've done all every single character is good endings and most of the char characters uh, bad endings. There's just uh, one ending I haven't gotten yet. Um, but yeah, there's multiple different endings uh, depending on how you progress through the relationships with the uh, different characters you can have. I believe there is five characters. Uh, hold on. Emmy, Rin, Lily, Shizun. Or is there only four? Am I forgetting somebody? Who am I forgetting? Oh, Hanako. Yeah, there's five. There's five. And then kind of six-ish, kind of. Let's go five and a half. But, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Uh, it, it really is a great game. And to have been made by such a small number of people, I'm not sure exactly how long it took them. But it is fantastic. And I love it. And it is one of my favorite things ever. And I've come back and played it many times before. And I recommend everybody who likes visual novels to give this a try and just enjoy it. Because I, I don't know anyone who I've told about this. Uh, some people were apprehensive about it at first um, as they looked into more information about it. Because there is adult content and nudity within the uh, VN. But yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into it right now. We're not going to get too far into it. Uh, mostly because this is going to be an intro video talking about it. But yeah, here we go. And, uh, one of the great things about this game is also the music. There's music for every single individual character, uh, different areas and stuff like that. And it's a wide array of music and all of it's fantastic. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The decks... Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and put a disclaimer, I guess, right here in the video. Um... Some words I will pronounce right, some words I won't. I. Dex. Dex. Uh, Dexius. De, de, okay, you get what I mean. The trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah, uh, yes, the note. Slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this stagnant world. Their slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time is slow to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. Huh, is that so? You came? So one thing I don't know if I'm going to do is, um, I, I, I can do high-pitched voices, and I can do s some different voices, so I might actually end up doing different voices for different characters who are speaking. Um, so we'll see about that. And uh, depending on how well people like it, I might not actually continue reading every single line like this. Um... If you don't want me to read the lines, uh, honestly, I don't really know why you're watching my video. There, I'm pretty sure there are multiple other playthroughs of the uh, uh, Katawa Sojo out there on YouTube and on other sites just as well. But um, yeah, if, if you don't want me to talk, and if that's just clear, like I'll still talk no matter what, but I won't be reading every line. I'll just be making comments on certain lines and things along those lines. Okay. A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. 
I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never is more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. <clears throat> Iwanaka? Iwanako? I, I don't know. I, I, Iwanako. I, Iwanako. God, I should learn Japanese. <clears throat> Iwanako. I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Um, uh, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle, even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Ibunako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, this writes her, uh, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. Oh, by the way, oh, excuse me, if you haven't already noticed, this is Japanese anime, other VN inspired, basically. It's it's a very Japanese-oriented, and it's based in Japan, the uh, story. And from what I recall, I don't think you ever leave Japan. Um, yeah. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see... I wanted to know if you'd go out with me. I stand there motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched. <clears throat> they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Is that? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Is that? My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. I don't know why I felt doing, like doing that, but I did, so there we go. The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, Iwanako, running towards me, all these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. And there we go with the intro to a great game slash visual novel. And I know a lot of people hesitate to uh, call it a game, but I'm still going to call it a game. Borleaf Studios presents Katawa Sojo. Yeah, I never get sick of seeing these uh, scenes. There's only a few of the, uh, like, Full motion scenes in the game. Actually, mo images in motion. I should I should say rather everything else is still an image. I think there's one for um, every entry into the uh, second chapter of the game or second act. I forget if it's referred to as chapter or act. But yeah, the first act of the uh, game it uh, basically sits up. It, it sets up in your decisions in the first act, which is, I think, where most of the choices are prevalent, or they're prevalent rather uh, quickly after one another. Um, that's whenever you decide whose uh, story you go down, basically, and who you romance. So, uh, yeah, so first act decides that, and then second and third act um, is what goes on from there. <clears throat> and here we go. It's been four months since my heart attack. Oh, and that actually moves. I never noticed that before. Oh, I guess it was just... Oh, no, there's more. And that whole time, I can barely... Yeah, I can probably count the times I've, less, I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. Racist. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? 
I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get-well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. But at the end of the first month, all of my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanaka was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess that's because they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly, idly, I idly, 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 idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest and slowly changed its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask, I, mm, 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 I need water, but I don't have any right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still ask, I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories. It was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. I feel like time blurred into some kind of gooey mess. Mass I was trapped inside, instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance and I, ah, I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual the head cardi cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hassel. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medication sorted out. I'll give you, your father their prescription. Whoopsies. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the papers seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradict. The uh, contradictions? Wait, is that how you spell contradictions? That seems rather long to say contradictions, but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's contradictions. And dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I tried to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this, for the rest of my life, every day.
I'm afraid that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years. What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, calm down, Hisao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So, I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? It has a 24-hour nursing staff and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital be nearby a selling point. I don't know. I mean, I, I think, like, having a hospital nearby your home, like, would be a selling point. I don't know. I mean, just saying. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. Looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people of your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school. And while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That is what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All of the students, they're pretty active, and in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help, in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me, but what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I'd always thought my life was actually kind of boring. Now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is, I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? As much as, much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. And it doesn't really sound like you're trying to put a positive spin on it. But let me try. Clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start. My life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. And sometimes uh, with longer scenes like that, that's one of the longer individual scenes. Oh, here we go. Act one, life expectant expectancy. Derp, derp. But uh, yeah, sometimes the music will stop. It's uh, not like a glitch in the game or anything along those lines. It's just they expect they don't expect people to be reading it out loud like I am. So if you're reading it, you know, in your mind, you know, not actually reading it, reading it out loud, then it's not going to take as long. So that's the reason why the music stopped. But um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the uh, video here. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, leave a like. And if you did not, go ahead and dislike. I want to know how people feel about the videos I make so I can be a better content creator for everybody who does enjoy my videos. But uh, yeah, if you have any recommendations, uh, please feel free to post them in the comments. And also, uh, I'm going to put this in the description as well because I forgot to mention it at the beginning of the video. But uh, I know the video looks weird. It's because I'm still using Fraps, which doesn't exactly agree with uh, recording the game very well. So I'm really sorry about that. But Fraps really is the best thing I can record with, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with it for now. If anybody knows any other recording software I can use, that would be much better uh, for specifically Kanawa Sojo because I do prefer to use Fraps for almost everything else. Uh, please feel free to go ahead and 
put a comment and link in the description. <clears throat> but um, also, on another note, uh, if you want me to do different voices, I I can try. There's some voice I, I can do high pitched voices. I don't want to do any examples right now because I kind of want it to be a surprise to see if people actually want to do it. But if anybody's interested, uh, just uh, you know, put a comment down below and say, yeah, I would like to hear your high pitched voice for different characters and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's about it. I hope you all have a lovely day. And if I don't see you. Yeah, I got nothing else. <laughs> but yeah, all of you have a good and lovely day. Goodbye.